the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All over the country, the folks who've tried Kraft's wonderful new natural cheese are saying this is the cheese we've been waiting for. Yes, Kraft's new cheese called K-Brand Natural is a very special cheese. It's a cheddar with a mellow flavor, a melt-in-your-mouth texture, and made of pasteurized milk. Remember the name, K-Brand Natural Cheddar. Listen for more about Kraft's latest triumphant cheesemaking later in the program. <laughs> Now let's see what's going on in the great Gildersleeve household. At the moment, the great man is in the living room, resting comfortably in front of the fireplace. <laughs> yeah. Leroy home yet, Miss Gildersleeve? Leroy, not yet, Bertie. I'm ready to put dinner on the table. Well, let's wait till he gets here. Anytime you say, I'm ready to put down the table. <laughs> All right, Bertie. He'll be here in a few minutes. Then our little family can sit down together. You just say the word, I'm ready to put down the table. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Bertie. <laughs> Uh, where is that kid? Playing football, I suppose. I'll never understand it. He can play for hours. If there's any work to be done around here, he gets worn out in 15 minutes. Uncle Mort, isn't dinner ready yet? Yes, my dear, but we're waiting for Leroy. Oh, Uncle, why can't we start? He'll catch up with us when he gets here. He eats twice as fast as we do. You heard me, Marjorie. We're all going to sit down together like any ordinary family. This isn't a boarding house, you know. We don't eat in shifts. If I don't eat pretty soon, I'll, I'll faint. Faint? I don't think there's any danger of that, my dear. Healthy girl like you. Well, I... Leroy? Yeah, Uncle. Come in here, young man. Hi. It's about time you got home. We've been waiting for... I will handle this, Marjorie. Leroy? Yeah, Uncle. Why are you so late getting home? I want a full explanation. I couldn't help it, Uncle. I was... You think that's right, Leroy? Keeping your family waiting this way while you're out kicking a football around? I wasn't playing football, Uncle. Oh, well, then what were you doing? I was at school rehearsing. Rehearsing? Rehearsing what? I'm Paul Revere. She made me do it. What are you talking about, Leroy? Old Lady Hatfield. She made me do it. We don't refer to our teachers as old ladies, Leroy. Well, anyhow, she says I gotta be in the school play. I'm Paul Revere. Well. Can't we eat now, Uncle? Just a moment. Well, well, so we have a little actor in the family. Leroy, huh? Never mind, my dear. Being in a school play is a great honor. They don't just pick anybody, you know. <clears throat> what kind of a play is it, my boy? Oh, it's a kind of a pageant. George Washington, Patrick Henry, and all those guys. I'm Paul Revere. Well, <laughs> sounds like a wonderful play. Old Lady Hatfield wrote it herself. It stinks. Leroy. <laughs> Well, it does. I wish I didn't have to be in it. That's the wrong attitude. It's a wonderful experience for you. Getting up before a lot of people gives you poise, self-confidence. Very valuable in later life. Who cares? Miss Gilfley. Oh, Leroy's here. Shall I put it on the table? Just a minute, Bertie. You said you'd waiting for Leroy, and he's here. In a minute, Bertie. Okay, then it's getting cold. Yes, sir, I'm mighty proud of you, my boy. Who wants to be an actor? That's sissy stuff. Put powder on your face, kiss girls. There's nothing wrong in learning how to kiss girls. That'll be very valuable in later life, too. <laughs> well, I'm not going to kiss Ethel Hammerschlag. I don't see where I had to make her Mrs. Paul Revere. Now, you mustn't be bashful, my boy. I'll tell you what. We can rehearse that kissing scene right here at home. You can practice on Marjorie. What? Kiss my sister? What a repulsive idea. <laughs> now, children. Let's eat. Tell me, Leroy, do you have a big part in the play? Yeah, I guess so. I have to say a lot of corny stuff. One of my land and two of my sea. Then I have to run around knocking on doors, hollering, wake up, wake up, the British are coming. I hope you're not going to say it like that. That wouldn't wake anybody up. Put some fire into it. Bring it up from the stomach, Leroy. Like this. Wake up, wake up, the British are coming. Did you call me, Miss Hilton? <laughs> no, Bernie. You see, Leroy, the British are coming. Mr. Gillsleeve, I don't care who's coming. I'm going to put it on the table right now. Well, hello, Mr. 
Mr. Gildersleeve. Ah, oh, good morning, Peavy. Good morning, good morning. What can I do for oh, you? Oh, nothing, Peavy. Just came in to say hello. Oh. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll just go right on working here. I, I'm preparing a display of tar and honey cough syrup. It's always a good winter item. Yeah, go right ahead. I uh, suppose you've heard about Leroy. Something happened to Leroy? I hope it's nothing serious. Oh, no, Peavy. Just thought you might be interested to know that he's going to be in the school play. Oh, that's so. That's nice. Well, it isn't much. He's just got one of the leading parts, that's all. Well, frankly, Mr. Gildersleeve, I never thought of Leroy as an actor. He seems to be more the outdoor type. Oh, well, I was a little surprised myself, but I guess the boy must have talent, all right. What's the play about? It's sort of historical. The history teacher wrote it. Oh, one of those things. No, no. Very good, Petey. I read part of it. George Washington's in it, and Patrick Henry, Nathan Hale. Hmm, sounds like an all-star cast. <laughs> and Leroy is Paul Revere. Is that too? Hmm. Of course, it's just a school play, but there's no telling where a thing like this might lead to. By Leroy might turn out to be another Mickey Rooney. Yes? What's wrong with being an actor? Well, I was introduced to a child actor in Chicago years ago, as I remember, and he was an obnoxious little fellow. He was? Wore a checkered suit, carried a cane, and he was smoking a cubeb. I wouldn't want to see that happen to Leroy. Don't worry, Peavy, it won't. Oh, by the way, they just got the tickets printed up for the play. Would you like to buy a couple? I know you'll want to see Leroy. Well, uh, how much are they? Forty cents apiece. Two will be eighty cents. Oh. You say, Mr. Gildersleeve, I was just thinking... It'd be awful if Leroy caught a cold and couldn't be in the play. Huh? What do you mean? Well, it's been known to happen to actors. Their throats are very sensitive. They are? Now, a bottle of this tar and honey cough syrup... That's a good idea, Peavy. Mm. I'll take it. How much is it? Eighty cents. (laughs) Same as the tickets. We'll call it an even trade. (laughs) Peavy, do you know what you are? You're an old... No, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh, good morning, Commish. Hello, Floyd. Your next Commish, what'll it be? A haircut? I don't need one, Floyd. Just dropped in to sell you some tickets. What are they for? The Irish sweepstakes? No, for school play. Oh, count me out, Commish. I don't go for them clam bakes. This happens to be a play about American history. Very educational. Uh huh. And it may interest you to know that Leroy is playing one of the leading parts. Uh huh. The tickets are only 40 cents. Certainly worth 40 cents to see Leroy. Well, isn't it? Well... All right, Floyd, it's up to you. I don't intend to force these tickets on you. I'm sure I can dispose of a few at the Summerfield Hotel barbershop. And I understand they do a pretty good job of cutting hair, too. Ha, 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 just kidding, Commish. I wouldn't miss the school play for anything. Not with Leroy in it. Give me two tickets. Here's the 80 cents. Well, thanks, Floyd. Well, see you later. I say, um, if you don't mind my saying so, you could stand a little trim in the back. Huh? That's all? Uh, and a massage wouldn't hurt. You could stand a shampoo. I could? Well, sure, you ought to keep up appearances with a star actor in the family. Well, I guess you're right, Floyd. Give me the works. Okay. Here's where I get my money back. What's that, Floyd? I know nothing, Commish. Uh, clippers on the side? Why, of course, Gildy. I'll be glad to buy two tickets. You would, Judge? Certainly. I consider it a privilege to be able to see Leroy perform. Well, thank you, Horace. Here are the tickets. That'll be 80 cents, please. Oh, um, by the way, Gildy. Yeah? I'd like to sell you some tickets. Huh? Yes, for our turkey raffle. And two tickets will be just a dollar. But so you owe me 20 cents. Thank you. <laughs> Leroy. Now try it again. Come on, Jim. Do I have to? Certainly. Everybody in this town is coming to see this play. Don't let your public down, Leroy. Oh, for corn's sake. Come on now. Go out and come in again. And put some life into it. Okay. Remember, you're Paul Revere and you're saving the nation. Okay. Wake up. Wake up. Defend yourselves. Take down your flintlocks. The British are coming. Egon. <laughs> 
Not that way, Leroy. And don't stand with your back to the audience. Well, that's where the door is. Miss Hatfield... I don't care what Miss Hatfield said. You tell me one thing and she tells me something else. It's making me nervous. Well, you listen to me. I'm your uncle. I didn't want to be in the old play in the first place. Well, you're going to be in it. It'll be good for you. Now try it again, Leroy. And this time, boom it out. You've got a good pair of lungs. The British are coming. Did you come? <laughs> no, Bertie. Okay, Leroy, let's take it again. There you are, Dr. Needham. Two tickets for the play. And I know you're going to enjoy Leroy's performance. Thank you, Mrs. Pettibone. Next Friday night now, school auditorium. And wait till you see Leroy. He's practically the lead... Oh, yes, indeed, Mayor Tulliger. I'm sure you'll be proud of Leroy when you see him. Why, he's the star of the whole show. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Oh, hello, Miss Gilsey. Well, Bertie, tomorrow night's the big night. Oh, here's two tickets for you. Thank you. Leroy had better be good. I've got the whole town coming to see him. Yes, sir. Funny thing, Bertie. I'm getting stage fright myself. Yes. <laughs> Bet I'm more nervous than Leroy. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Bertie? Something wrong? Well, Mr. Gilsey, I got bad news for you. What's the matter? Well, it's bad news. Tell me, Bertie, what is it? It's bad news. Well, what is it? You better ask Miss Marjorie. She'll tell you all about it, Miss Gilsey. Oh, for heaven's sake. Marjorie! Yes, Uncle Morris? What's going on around here? What's Bertie talking about? Bad news. Well, the... you better ask Leroy, Unky. By George, I'll get to the bottom of this. Leroy! Did you call me, Unky? Come down here, young man. Okay. Yeah, Unk? Leroy, what's the list about bad news? Bad news? I don't know. Leroy, the play. The play? What about the play? Oh, haven't you heard, Uncle? I'm not going to be in it. Oh! <laughs> yeah, too bad, isn't it? <laughs> Leroy, when did this happen? This afternoon. Miss Hatfield took me out of it. Took you out of it? Why? She said she couldn't stand another day of me. Guess I'm just a lousy actor. You can say that again. He is not. Well, it's too late to do anything about it, Uncle. The dress rehearsal is tonight. The play goes on tomorrow. Too bad, isn't it? <laughs> Leroy? By George, she's not going to get away with this. Don't forget, I'm on the school board. And I'm a taxpayer. And besides that, I bought $12 worth of tickets. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. For everybody who loves a real, rich-tasting, mellow cheddar cheese, here's a piece of great news. Kraft's experts at cheesemaking now have created a natural cheddar cheese with all that good old cheddar flavor, that glorious melt-in-your-mouth texture, but made from pasteurized milk. The name, K-Brand Natural. That's K-A-Y, K-Brand Natural. This is truly a triumph in cheesemaking. Did you say K-Brand is natural cheese made from pasteurized milk? That's right. Every drop of milk is carefully and thoroughly pasteurized. And K-Brand is aged in a new way, too. It's sealed in a sparkling clear wrapper before it goes to the curing room. And right in that same spick and span wrapper, it ages to a mellow goodness. You mean this natural cheddar has no cheesecloth or paraffin cover? That's exactly what I mean. K-Brand has no rind at all. Every bit is usable in sandwiches, with pie, for snacks, and your cheese tray. K-Brand sounds wonderful. How do I buy it? Just look for the big 10-pound bar marked K-Brand Natural. K-Brand Natural, all down the top and sides. Then have your dealer cut a portion for you. A good big portion, I might suggest, for K-Brand is downright delicious eating. Put K-Brand on your shopping list for tomorrow. Remember, it's the natural cheddar made from pasteurized milk. The great Gildersleeve is a patient man, but when his loved ones are attacked, he has all the fury of a grizzly bear protecting its cubs. We find him now storming down the corridor of the Summerfield Grammar School, dragging his cub behind him. Come on, Leroy, and stop dragging your feet. Please, Uncle, I don't want to go in there. 
You don't have to be ashamed. I know my rights. We're going to have it out with Miss Hatfield right now. But they're right in the middle of dress rehearsal. All the kids will be in there. They'll hear you. Never mind. Well, well here's the auditorium. No, no, no. Yeah, there she is in the front row. Donald, tell your stage crew to take that rowboat out of there. It belongs in the George Washington scene. Okay, Miss Hatfield. Listen to her bossing everybody around. Um, Come on, Leroy. And will the orchestra please be quiet? I can't shout over all that noise. Uh, Miss Hatfield? And Donald, do we have only one tree? This is supposed to be a forest. Miss Hatfield? Uh, yes? Oh, Leroy, what are you doing here? Oh, Miss Hatfield. I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. I... Miss Hatfield, does this costume look all right? Oh! Hi, Leroy. Hi, Ethel. Miss Hatfield, I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. Ethel, where did you get that costume? You're supposed to be Betsy Ross, not some ragamuffin. Don't I get any cooperation from the art department? Miss Hatfield, I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. Just a moment, please. What? Ethel, don't just stand there. You go back to Miss Fraser and tell her you're Betsy Ross. Miss Hatfield? Uh, yes? What is it? I'm Betsy Ross. I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> yes? And Leroy was Paul Revere this afternoon. Yes, I know that. Well, what I wanted to know is... That is, well, why did you take him out? Mr. Gildersleeve, Leroy is a fine boy. I like him very much, but he'll never be an actor. Not in one million years. That's what I told you, Unc. You keep out of this, Leroy. Miss Hatfield? Mr. Gildersleeve, please. I can't have any more interruptions. Well, I don't care. This play goes on tomorrow night, and everything's going wrong. Half the scenery isn't ready, the costumes don't fit, and I'm on the verge of a breakdown. I'm sorry, that's not my worry. But why can't Leroy... Mr. Gildersleeve... Putting on a play with children isn't easy. It isn't easy at all. But when I have to contend with the parents, well, some of them are worse than the children. Miss Hatfield, it may interest you to know that I am not only Leroy's uncle, but I also happen to be a member of the school board. Well, if you don't think I'm doing my job, you can fire me. Uh, I don't care. Fire me. Uh, oh, Miss Hatfield, don't. I, I didn't mean it. Here's my handkerchief. Gee, Uncle, what did you do that for? Shut up. Miss Hatfield. Everybody's looking at us. What's the matter here? Hey, it's the principal. Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Eve. What's the matter, Miss Hatfield? He can fire me if he wants to. I don't care. No, no, no. Nobody's going to fire you. No, of course not. I didn't mean anything at all. I was just asking Miss Hatfield about Leroy. <laughs> oh. Mm. It's all right, Miss Hatfield. Doc Morton. Yes? Miss Hatfield has been under quite a strain these last few weeks. She teaches all day, and then she's been rehearsing this play after school hours on her own time. On her own time? Yes. I'm sorry that Leroy had to be taken out of the play, but I think that can be remedied. Uh, Miss Hatfield. Yes, Miss Goodwin. Uh, George Washington has only one aide-de-camp in the play. Uh, do you think he might have two? I suppose so. Well, that could be Leroy. And, and you might give him just one line. Well, just one. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Hatfield. Yes. Thank you, Miss Hatfield. Yeah, thank you, Miss Hatfield. Oh. Unky, look, the school's all lit up. Yeah. Can't you walk a little faster? We're going to be late. What's the matter? What are you stopping for? Marjorie. I don't think I'll go to the play. Uncle Mort. I think I'll just turn around and go back home. You just run along by yourself. You can tell them I'm sick. Unky, you're acting like a child. You know you're not sick. Well, I will be. You can just see the judge and the rest of them when they find out about Leroy's part. Aide de camp. One line. Oh, you didn't have to tell everybody Leroy was going to be the star. I know. Sometimes, Marjorie, I think your old uncle isn't very smart. Well, he's a very nice uncle. Now, come on. Yeah. Uh, all right. Guess I might as well pace the music. Well, look at the crowd going up the steps. Everybody in town must be here. Yes. Uh, Marjorie, maybe we could wait till they all go in. We'll kind of sneak in in the dark after they... Hiya, go. Commish. Oh, uh, Floyd. Hiya. Hello, Marjorie. Hello. Well, me and the missus got here all right. Big night for Leroy, huh, Commish? Bet you're pretty happy. Uh, yes, I'm happy. Say, you think Leroy will give me his autograph? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve, Marjorie. Hello, Mr. Peavy. 
Well, I suppose you're both feeling pretty proud on this night of nights. Hey, pipe the judge over there. <laughs> He's wearing a full dress suit. Hey, judge! Why don't they go away? Well, this is quite a distinguished gathering. Where'd you get the monkey suit? Don't be crude, Floyd. You look wonderful, Judge Hooker. Thank you, my dear. I thought I'd dress to suit the occasion in honor of Summerfield's rising young thespian. <laughs> I hear the strains of the overture. Shall we enter the auditorium? Me and the peeves got our wives waiting. See inside. Come, Gildy. Let the play begin. Let joy be unconfined. Oh, brother. Wigwam's cute. Me, he's big Indian chief, father of Indian maiden Pocahontas. Say, isn't that Leroy's friend, Piggy? Captain John Smith. Oh, we chop him off pale face head. Oh, father, please spare pale face. Pocahontas loves John Smith. <laughs> hey, Commissioner, when does Leroy come on? Mm, that Floyd should have gone home. Hey, Commissioner. Quiet, Floyd. Huh? Shh. Big Chief, spare life of pale face. Come, we smoke pipe of peace in wigwam. Ha <laughs> ha They knocked the wigwam down. Said he was the star. Yes, is it time for Paul Revere, Gildy? You better tell me, Monty. Well, you see, Judge, Leroy isn't here. Shh. Wonder if I could sneak out of here. <laughs> Leroy was, but uh, they decided... That... Wake up! Wake up! The British are coming! Hey, where's Leroy? I want my 80 cents back. Well, there was a slight change, Judge. General Washington, I am your most obedient servant. I bow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, Gildy. His wig fell off. <laughs> I knew he'd do something wrong. <laughs> he can't get the wig back on. Oh, it's on now. Uh, I bow. <laughs> <laughs> it fell off again. <laughs> get off that stage, Leroy. He's knocking his wig off again on purpose. <laughs> I bow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get away from here. Don't go so fast, Donkey. Aren't we going to wait until Leroy gets dressed? I'll dress him at home. Disgracing me like that. Come on, let's get out of here before those... Gildy, wait a minute. Hooker. What'd you run away for? Um, I'm in a hurry, Horace. Why, Gildy? Aren't you going backstage to congratulate Leroy? 
Huh? Why, he was the hit of the show. The hit? He was? Certainly, certainly. Everybody's talking about it. That was very clever, the way he kept making his wig fall off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Kamish, you were right. The kid's a scream. Oh, well, thank you, Floyd. I thought he was rather good. Good. When the missus laughed so hard, she almost swallowed a bridge work. <laughs> yeah, Leroy's pretty talented, all right. Yeah. Of course, I coached him a little. <laughs> may I add my congratulations, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, of course, Peavy. And may I suggest a little celebration at my drugstore? The sodas are on me. Oh, gee, swell. Excellent idea. I'll be right with you. I'm going backstage and get the star of the show. <laughs> little Leroy. <laughs> More from the Great Gildersleeve in just a minute. If you have a family that likes snacks at bedtime, here's a tip on how to keep them happy. Have plenty of Kraft's newest cheese on hand. It's a natural cheddar cheese with that good old mellow flavor, but made from pasteurized milk. Yes, Kraft's K-Brand Natural is made from carefully, thoroughly pasteurized milk. And K-Brand is aged right in its own spick-and-span wrapper, so it has no rind. All its mellow, melt-in-your-mouth goodness can be used for hearty, nutritious sandwiches. And what delicious sandwiches they are. Buy some tomorrow from the big 10-pound bar in your dealer's refrigerator case. Remember the name, K-Brand. The natural cheddar made of pasteurized milk. Yes, yes, you were, Leroy. I guess I was the head of the show. Yes, Leroy, I've told you that 20 times. It's almost midnight. Now run on up to bed. The way I kept making my wig fall off. Neat, huh? Yes, yeah. I guess I got more laughs than anybody. Leroy, go to bed. General Washington, I am your most obedient servant. I bow. <laughs> Gee, I was funny. Good night, Leroy. Good night, Unc. General Washington, I bow. <laughs> Little ham. Good night. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Charles Boyer will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Oh? Don't miss it. Remember, tomorrow night. For exact time, see your local paper. And listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, save time in making that favorite thrifty main dish, macaroni and cheese. With Kraft Dinner, you can make macaroni and cheese that's fluffy light and downright delicious... In just seven minutes, cooking time. And every bite of that fluffy macaroni has a swell cheddar cheese flavor. Kraft Dinner costs only a few cents a serving. So save time and money. Get several packages of Kraft Dinner from your food store tomorrow. Look for the yellow and blue package, plainly marked Kraft Dinner. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.